All right, okay, so hello, dears. <laughs> Ayan, hello. So welcome, welcome, welcome to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in clinical parasitology. And for this lecture, what we're going to talk about now are the different culture techniques or method in parasitology, no? In culturing parasites. All right, so the previous, uh, the previous lecture before this, kay nag lumra ko, no? Yes. Para naman, di ba? Di ba, kabula na mo sa akong purpose sa loom para po... Uh, ma-miss ko ninyo, para po dili ko sige, dili niyo makita, dili niyo sige makita kong face, char, ganun. So last, um, the lecture before this is scotch tape swab, no? So yes, for the detection of enterobius vermicularis infections, the gold standard, yes naman, press the buzzer, the gold standard for the detection of enterobius vermicularis eggs or for the diagnosis of enterobius vermicularis infections. Yes, so sa loom to siya, di ba? So quite short din naman yung na presentation, so... Parang I don't need to make like this. <laughs> okay, so, ayan. But for this, medyo mataas-taas yung itichika natin. So, that's why ganito. Alright. So, for this, after, for this afternoon, for this lecture, we're focusing now on the techniques on how to culture or culture parasites. Alright. But generally, when you talk about culture, no, um, you usually associate that with bacteria because it's one of the main methods to diagnose um, our pathogens or our bacterial pathogens. Yes. We perform culture. We perform culture, no? And for parasites, delete kaayo. You cannot hear um, diagnostic methods, routine diagnostic methods for detecting parasites using culture, no? Because again, we diagnose parasites, di ba, usually through direct fecal smear na, wet mounts, concentration techniques, staining, and even um, serological tests, no? Like testing antibodies, antigens in the patients serum to determine if the body or the patient has an immune response against the parasite, diba? But again, culture, not, not much, okay? But there are still some um, tests, methods for culturing that we can use in order to further identify the parasite, okay? So we'll, we'll know that later. So that's what we're going to focus in this lecture, okay? All right, so again, these are culture or culture techniques in parasitology. All right, so as usual, of course, before we go into the bulk <laughs> or the main topics of our lecture, we're going to start first with some introduction. Starting first is what is the meaning of cultivation or culture? No? Cultivation is, again, the process of growing microorganisms or your parasites, in this case, um, in culture, yes, by taking them from the infection site, which is your in vivo environment, and then uh, from using a specimen collection, like example, um, blood collection ba, no? If ang specimen mo is blood, or like um, swab ba siya, or is it stool, yes. And then from there, from specimen collection, we then introduce the specimen to an in vitro environment or artificial environment within the laboratory. So the main purpose of cultivation is we want to make sure, okay, or we want to grow, okay, these microorganisms or parasites um, in the environment of the laboratory, in the artificial environment, okay. So we're taking it out. Outside of our body, uh, we're taking it outside the body, no, or outside our in vivo. When you say in vivo, it's inside the body, in vivo. And in vitro is after, uh, after outside the body, okay? So you're taking the pathogens, the microorganisms, the parasites outside the body where they are causing infection, they're causing the disease. And then you take them out and then you put it in the in, in vitro environment, in this case, the laboratory, and we make them grow. Because again, for the purpose of examining them, determining them, and eventually identifying them. And then eventually, paren, to determine what is the probable or what is the most effective treatment against these uh, microorganisms. Okay? All right. So that's cultivation. The whole process of culturing or cultivation. Okay? And when you say culture, the culture refers to the microorganisms or parasites that grow and multiply in a culture medium. Okay, diba? I think I have mentioned some, <laughs> I have, I've mentioned the word culture medium, culture media, media, diba? From our previous mga lectures, alright? Okay, so uh, that's, we're going to, uh, we're going to um, sana, define <laughs> those terms here para you don't get to be confused, diba? So again, cultivation is the process. Culture, actually culture can be interchangeably used with cultivation as the process also. But aside from that, culture can also refer to the microbes mismo or the parasites themselves that grow on the culture medium. Okay, so what is now a culture medium? A culture medium is therefore something like a habitat, no? Or dirisha mutubo, okay? So this is where your microorganisms or parasites grow in, 
the environment of the laboratory, in the artificial environment of the laboratory. Because again, take note that we are taking them outside the body, which they normally like or which they like, <laughs> and then taking them outside the body and then putting them in a different environment from the body, kung asa sila na used to, or from where they were used to living in, okay? <laughs> and now we're taking them outside. So we need to provide the necessary nutrients, the necessary requirements, essential nutrients that are normally found in the body that help them grow, okay? So we need to provide that. Because ato man silang gitang-tang, or we got them naman, or we extracted them from the body, and then we placed them in the environment of the, of the laboratory. So we need to um, copy, no? or we need to make sure that the nutrients that they are getting inside the body, okay, where they were, again, causing infection, causing disease, we get to supply that same nutrients when we put them in the laboratory. And how do we do that? we then put them in your culture medium, okay? And the culture medium now contains all the essential nutrients, proper concentration, salt, water, free of hit inhibitory substances, meaning substances that could uh, not let them grow or inhibit them grow, and desired consistency, proper pH, etc. So essential nutrients, basically, essential nutrients for them to grow. Like, likewise, or similar to their growth when they were inside the body, okay? I hope na gets lang. That's the point of your culture medium, okay? And your culture medium may be solid, okay? Maybe liquid, semi-solid, or biphasic. So when you say biphasic, base phasic, <laughs> biphasic, bi, dalawa, phasic, phase. So it's a culture medium that contains a solid and a liquid phase, okay? So usually we see, uh, we use biphasic medium for viruses. Uh, usually viruses and biphasic medium. But there's still uh, biphasic medium for bacteria and parasites, okay? All right, again. And may or may not contain um, agarose. Now, when you say agarose, agarose is a um, is extracted from seaweeds, okay? <laughs> and your agarose has the capability to solidify. Um, it has the capability, rather, to melt at higher temperatures. And then once it cools down to less than 50 degrees Celsius, to less than 50 degrees Celsius, it then solidifies, okay? And when it solidifies, it now becomes your agar, okay? Your agar, diba? Agar, okay? And actually, agarose, agar, quite similar then ang composition with your gelatin, okay? Yung mga ginagamit natin for mga bukosal, <laughs> yung mga <laughs> ginagamit for uh, mga parties, no? mga fiesta, mga ganun. Yes, they have the same con uh, composition. They have the same um, ability then that they can melt at higher temperatures, but once you let them cool down, it then solidifies, okay? And we incorporate agarose, okay? We incorporate agarose in your solid and semi-solid culture medium, okay? So if you can see pictures in the internet, no? Or like um, posts in Facebook that have plates. Here are picture, yes, our background. Those are agar plates, okay? So these are examples of culture medium, and they are solid in nature, okay? So they contain agarose. All right, when it comes to liquid culture media, it does not contain any agarose because it's liquid, okay? So, um, again, as I've mentioned, when you talk about culture, cult cultivation, it's usually more common or more commonly observed, more commonly used um, in bacteria, in diagnosing bacterial diseases and in identifying them. You'll have more of that when you go to bacteriology, yes, in the third year. And also, Mam Teddy, the best, will introduce uh, culture media then in your intro to micro. So you'll have plenty of information there. There are a lot of different culture media depending on the bacteria that you need to identify, depending on the constituents, the composition of the culture media themselves, and also what you want to isolate. Okay, so it would depend. So if example for E. coli, Escherichia coli, what would you use now culture media? For salmonella, what culture media? So, yes, more, more to come in your third year, bacteriology. Yes, the best, my favorite. Okay, all right. And yeah, so example, no, since as I mentioned, agarose and gelatin, quite the same, um, quite the same constitu as quite the same abilities, no? Um, yeah, that's what we did last SEM, first SEM with my bacteriology students. Um, because again, that's included in your class. You need to know that, you know, culturing. You need to know how to culture bacteria. So that's included in bacteriology. That's the bulk of bacteriology laboratory. So what we did is we sent them, 
packs of gelatin. <laughs> like the normal gelatin that we use, yes, for again, mga piesta, mga whatever, gulaman and all that. So, and then we also gave them Petri dishes and then they made the gelatin and made an agar plate made out of gelatin. Okay, so just to, stimu just to simulate okay, what it's like to culture. And parang na-achieve naman, pero iba ragyod, lahi ragyod, lahi ragyod ang normal na agar compared to gelatin. Okay? So, because of this, yes, um, situation good face-to-face. -face. Um, it's limited, good, limited ang learning in terms of the skills, especially the bak sa, sa bakte for culturing. Okay? And that's really important. And bacteriology is supposed to be one of the best then for me and one of the best mga lingaw, one of the best mga sadya good activities sa lab. Okay, can you get to identify bacteria? It's very amazing. Okay, but you'll have that in your third year, hopefully soon, na face to face na. So yes, all right. So again, uh, you'll also be introduced that by Mom Teddy sa Intro to Micro. Okay, all right. So again, just some basic um, introduction. Okay, so again, we need to make sure that your bacteria or parasites, microorganisms, they there is a successful transition okay between the in vivo meaning coming from the body to the in vitro environment in the laboratory so we need to make sure there's a lot of factors to um to uh, accomplish or to achieve okay you need to make sure that the culture medium is always ayan i forgot to highlight it should be sterile okay so when you say sterile it's free of any other contaminants other microorganisms because again when there are other microorganisms that are present in your culture medium that could, uh, that could hinder your uh, results, that could affect your results then. So we want to make sure as much as possible that it is sterile, okay? Free from any contaminants, free from any other microorganisms that you don't want, okay, to be identified, okay? All right, very, very important. Ayan. So that's for the introduction. Dami kong chika, okay, when it comes to culture, yes. But sa bacteriology, I love that. Okay, but anyway, love ko rin naman yung para. Okay, <laughs> all right. Ayan, so we now focus on the culture techniques in parasitology. As I've mentioned, it's not routinely done. As in, in routine laboratory hospitals, I have not experienced culturing parasites. But again, for bacteria, it's part of it. <laughs> That's your work as a med tech. You culture bacteria and then you identify them afterwards. Okay, but again, in para, uh, it's not routinely done. Uh, it's only used as, uh, usually for accurate identification of parasite species. Um, it's more often employed also if you want to yield large amounts of parasites, usually as a source of antigen, ba? for example, for um, testing for drugs ba? or serological testing. Animal inoculation, if you want to test it on animals, if you want to test the effect of parasites on animals, which you could then um, extrapolate or use as a basis for the effects of parasites on humans then, or whatever studies ba. Drug sensitivity testing, as I've mentioned, experimental or physiological studies. Example, if you want to, to determine what is the, uh, the, the function of this parasite or what happens inside the body of the parasite, uh, what happens inside the body when the parasite is uh, in the body, and for academic purposes, like tayo, no? for teaching purposes. But for diagnosis, again, it's not routinely done. Okay? All right. And... For prerequisites, uh, the sample, your stool sample, blood sample, whatever, it should be fresh and should, be, should not be fixed. Because again, your fixatives, your preservatives will kill uh, those parasites, okay? It can kill those parasites or it can, um, yeah, it can kill those parasites. So what happens is if makil ng parasites, if your parasites are killed, then of course, they cannot grow anymore in the culture medium, okay? Because again, they're already killed. Likewise then, if uh, for bacteriology, if you want to culture um, samples, for bacteria, your sample should be fresh. It should not be um, preserved using formalin or what. But there are some preservatives that you can use for um, bacteriology, but only for a short while. And they can not kill the bacteria. They only like stop the growth, okay, but not kill. Ayan. So, yes. So, that's for bacteria. And again, for parasites then, fresh sample and fixed must come from the appropriate sample. Of course, if you want to determine intestinal protozoa, or mga intestinal parasites, and of course, your sample should be coming from the intestine. So, stool, rectal swab, whatever. Okay? All right. And if coming from clinical samples, of course, it is of utmost importance that the patient has not taken any antiparasitic drugs. Why? Still the same reason, because if the patient has already taken antiparasitic drugs, that could mean that 
the parasites that could have been found in the body has already been killed. Okay, now example, if light infections lang, like konti lang yung parasites, the parasites in your body are just little. So if you have already taken antiparasitic drugs, so these parasites have already been killed and they're only in small numbers. So pag culture ni mo, or when you subject that to culture, no parasites will grow anymore. Okay, so it's very important that uh, the patient does not take any antiparasitic drugs. Same then sa bakte. Example, if we want to culture blood, okay, it's best that um, the patient has not taken yet any antibiotics, okay? Or yeah, in culturing bacteria, it's best good that the patient is not yet taking any antibiotics. Because again, of the reason that if you have already taken drugs against these pathogens, then these pathogens have already died, okay? All right, so you cannot see any more any pathogens in culture that have grown. So walay pulo si mong culture. Your culture is a waste, okay? All right, ayan. And lastly, appropriate growth culture medium must be used. Okay, so it would depend on each parasite, bacteria that you would need to use on or that you need or that you want to identify. Each bacteria, parasites has their own type of culture medium. Okay, all right. And we'll now go, because of that, so we'll now go to different methods. No? So first is for protozoa. So these are methods for acanthamoeba, entamoeba hesolytica, negleria foliary. Toxoplasma gondii and Trichomonas vaginalis. So these are some of the culture media or methods. It's a semi-solid medium slant with a liquid overlay. So meaning it's a slant and then you put a liquid um, inside the tube. We'll have a picture later. So first is the Boeck and Derbolav medium, which is an egg slant. So the slant is made up of egg with an overlay, meaning you put a liquid on the slant. Um, liquid made up of sterile serum, it be human, well, I should specify, or liver extract, yes, in buffered saline. So this will serve as the source of food, nutrients by your parasite that you will culture. Okay. Another one is the Cleveland Collier medium, the Macque diphasic charcoal medium. So diphasic, ayan, or biphasic, so liquid and solid, but it contains charcoal, yes. Um, diamond, which uses a chick embryo, ayan, extract. So... Very invasive, no? We use animal extract then. Chick embryo. Um, Diamond also is the medium used for Trichomonas vaginalis. Yes. Uh, Trichomonas vaginalis. In your third year book, Nastrasinger, for urinalysis and other body fluids, it has mentioned, or the Strasinger mentioned, uh, that T. vaginalis uh, is cultured on Diamond's medium. Yes, press the buzzer. Uh, that's based on Strasinger. Okay, your third year book in urinalysis and other body fluids. Okay, all right. And uh, nutritive broth, meaning it's a liquid broth. Murang broth na kanang chicken broth ganun. Okay, but yeah, liquid, nutritive, by the name itself, it supplies nutrients, usually for the purpose of preservation, like for future, future studies or for, for proliferation, para mas mudaghan pa sila. Okay, so that they would grow in number. Nutritive broth. And usually that's balamuth's monophasic. Ayan, by the name itself, monophasic, one face lang. So it's liquid in nature. It's an egg yolk liver extract. So combined infusion medium. So again, liquid siya. Monophasic, broth, by the name itself, broth. When you talk about broth, di ba liquid? Chicken broth, pork broth, ganun, okay. So here's an example of your Boeck and Derbolav medium. So as you can see, the tube is um, slant. So if side view, ganito ang yang itsura. Ayan, slant. So this is the egg slant. Okay. And then you put a liquid here, which is your overlay. And diba, as mentioned, the overlay of Boeck and Derbolav is uh, sterile serum or pwede siyang liver extract. Ayan. So what you do is you culture or you put your bac uh, bacteria, your parasite here. And then after, you then put the liquid overlay, which is your serum or liver extract. Okay. All right. Ayan. And I think you get a liquid sample here. I think, to examine, okay, all right, under the microscope, to look for usually trophozoites of your, um, uh, for your protozoa. And as mentioned, the Negleria foliary, remember, acanthamoeba in our lecture, previous lecture, we can culture them also using nutrient agar plates, diba? Uh, nutrient agar plates, NA, with unsa to na kagaw, or with unsa na bacteria, E. coli, diba? Or Escherichia coli. Okay? Do not be confused ha, because na po E. coli sa para, di ba? You have Entamoeba coli, but in Bacte, you also have E. coli, which is Escherichia coli. So for our purposes, we need to um, specify. So for this purpose, di ba, Negleria foliary acanthamoeba, you can culture them in nutrient agar plates, okay? Or non-seeded nutrient agar plates that contain 
E. coli, Escherichia coli, bacteria, which will serve as the food source for these um, amoeba. Okay? And E. hesolytica, diba also in our previous lecture on Entamoeba hesolytica, it can also be cultured on TYIS33, another culture medium. Lumabas sa yung exam, di ba? Okay. Alright. Ayan. So, those are some methods for protozoa. And next, of course, for Leishmania and Trypanosoma, which are, again, blood uh, parasites, um, you have the NNN medium, Novi McNeil Nicole medium, which is a defibrinated rabbit blood agar. So, yes, there are blood agars. <laughs> You'll have that in your bactedin. You will know that the blood will so serve as a source of nutrients for your parasites or bacteria. And in this case, for NNN, you use rabbit blood, okay? And you took away fibrin, okay? So because again, fibrin causes clotting. So you want to make sure that the blood is fresh, it will not clot, so you take away fibrin. And aside from that, fibrin also can capture your parasites, okay? So that would let them, or that would hinder them to grow, okay? So to remove the fibrin, you defibrinate, okay? So that's NNN. And another one is you have the Schneider's insect culture, medium, which is considered, considered, which is recommended in vitro culture for Leishmania, and it's more sensitive than NNN. And it consists of cells coming from your fruit fly, which is your Drosophila melanogaster. Ayan. So here's your picture, NNN medium. Of course, as you can see, it's red because, again, it's defibrinated blood. <laughs> Rabbit blood, ha? Huh? And, of course, your Schneider's insect medium, which is a cell culture. Okay, so you use cells coming from what? Your fruit fly, Drosophila Melanogaster. Okay, alright. So, for Leishmania trypanosomas, you can see these are all blood uh, parasites. We'll, ha we'll talk about them when we go to blood examination. Um, so, of course, it's um, imperative to use a blood medium because they will grow best there. Okay? Alright, that's for Leishmania and trypanosoma. And lastly, of course, for culture methods for helminths, which we're going to focus now in our lab activity then. Starting first with your Harada Mori or filter paper culture technique for hookworms, strongy, and trichostrongylus. You also have the slant culture, which is a modification of your Harada Mori. Agar plate cultivation and Bayerman funnel technique, both for strongyloides, isolation. And lastly, you have the charcoal culture. And we'll go to that individually, which are, is our focus for the majority of this lecture. Okay? All right. And for the next video, we'll start first with the first method, which is your Harada Mori or filter paper culture technique and which is also a laboratory activity, okay? So I'll see you on the next video, all right.